Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining our webinar today on working with plugins for PaintShop Pro. My name is Carly Dieter, and I'm the Product Marketing Manager for PaintShop Pro. And with me today is Tanya Lux, the Senior Product Marketing Manager for Digital Arts Products. And I'll pass things over to her just a little bit later on. Before we get started, I'd like everyone to know this webinar will be recorded. So tomorrow you will receive a follow-up email and that will include a link to re-watch the recording at your own leisure. So don't worry too much if you happen to miss something here and there, you'll be able to watch any part of the webinar over again as you please. Since today is all about plugins, I thought we could start off by defining what exactly a plugin is. Uh, simply put, a plugin is a software add-on that enhances or extends the features or capabilities of a program. Now, PaintShop Pro itself is already a quite robust and powerful photo editor and graphic design software on its own, but if we use plugins in collaboration with PaintShop Pro, it really pushes the boundaries of what you can achieve. So on the agenda today, uh, we'll be looking at Photo Mirage, Pick to Painting, Perfectly Clear, 3 Complete, and Particle Shop. So let's go ahead and get started with our first product, which is Photo Mirage. So I'll go ahead here and launch Photo Mirage right from the beginning so you can see how quick and seamless the launch process is. You just simply click on the icon. and the product opens. So how you're first greeted here is with a welcome guide. And this welcome guide is packed with a whole bunch of really excellent information uh, for you to revisit. It is dynamic, so we continue to update it on a pretty regular basis. You have three tabs when you first launch the welcome guide. You have the what's new, tutorials, and gallery. So within what's new, you'll find a whole bunch of great uh, informative content here for you to scroll through. Under tutorials, you have exactly that, a bunch of tutorials that you can watch specific features and how to accomplish uh, different kinds of projects you might want a little guidance on. And of course, gallery is a whole bunch of photo animations that are populated by our users, just like you. So if you're using Photo Mirage and you create something amazing, please send it in to us and you'll likely see it right on this page. So to exit out, you just simply press the X or the escape key on your uh, keyboard. And this is how the workspace looks for Photo Mirage. So to begin, we'll bring in an image to animate and to do that, um, we can do that three different ways. First of all, we can just click and drag and drop an image into the workspace here. We can click File, New or Open to bring in an image, or we can simply click this big open button right in the workspace. So I'll go ahead and do that. And let's get started with this image here. Okay, so this image here is just a really nice professional image of a photographer on a mountaintop. So what we want to do here is, is bring life to this photo and animate it. And I'll show you how to do that in just a few really quick and easy steps. When you first bring in an image, you are the default icon that's on is the animation tool here. So Another a helpful hint here is if you hover over any of the tools, you'll get a little description of what it is if you're not sure. So I'll start with the animation tool here. Underneath the animation tools are what's called motion arrows, which is the tool that you click, drag, and drop. Oops, sorry. We click on it. Then we click, drag, and drop motion arrows like so, and this creates movement in the direction we want to see the movement. So this is saying we want to see movement in the clouds across the sky just as the arrows are being dragged. So we'll go ahead and drag and drop a few arrows just like that throughout the sky. The next tool we want is the anchor points. So what the anchor points do is keep the image, the parts of the image that you want to keep still. So we plot these just along the horizon like so. And now everything below this horizon will remain still when we do the third step, which is just press play.
So you can see how quick and easy that was to accomplish. We're getting a little something funny here. And that's this is part of the beauty of Photo Mirage is you can always stop and go back, maybe click on the trash can. That's You can click on the trash can and delete any of your points if you choose. And maybe I'll try a little bit of a shorter one. Do the same for this guy up here. Now the difference between shorter and longer motion arrows are the longer you drag your motion arrow, the faster the movement will appear. So in an image like this, we don't want it to look like it's moving too quickly. So that's why I've shortened our motion arrows up there. So let's go ahead and click play again and see the difference. So that's a little bit better. That looks a little bit more natural. There's lots of ways you can go ahead and manipulate your photo anima animations. For example, you can make it faster or slower with the speed slider here. So you can either drag the slider from left to right or use the arrows up here to make it faster or slower. And the speed of which you want your photo to animate will always depend on what kind of image it is. So for example, with clouds, typically they don't move very quickly in the sky. So we'll have, we'll, we'll keep our speed a, a little bit on the slower side. So that was it. It's those three simple steps. It's, it literally takes under a minute to um, add life to an image like this and really make it animate. So now I'm going to bring in another image to show you. One of a little different style. So this image here, um, we're going to animate the steam. So it looks like the steam is actually coming off of this bowl of food here. So we, we bring in the image the same way. Again, we start with our animation tools and our motion arrows. And we click, drag, and drop in the direction we want the steam to kind of gently move. Just like so. Really quick and easy. You don't have to get very precise with it. Next, we click on our anchor points here. And we're going to plot them right around all of the areas of the actual of the actual bowl and table. The nice thing with this image here, because it's a black background, and this will apply to any image with a solid color background, is we don't have to worry too much about areas. For example, where I'm moving my cursor in this um, negative space over here. How this works is actually where you plot your um, your motion arrow. Oops. When you press play, it's actually the pixels being pushed in the direction your motion arrow is facing. So if the background is an opaque color, we don't have to worry too much about pulling certain areas that we don't want. So again, let's go ahead and press play and see what happens here. So I hope you can get the full effect. I know sometimes on GoToWebinar we see a little bit of a leg, um, but hopefully you see how this looks because it is quite striking. It actually looks like this was a video and certain parts of the image of the video, excuse me, were made still versus the opposite, which is just taking one single static image and allowing it to look animated. Okay, so let's go ahead and stop that. I'll walk you through a couple of the different uh, tools here. This tool that looks like a highlighter is called Mask. And this essentially is um, acts very similar to our anchor points. So you can use the mask and anchor points together, or you can use one or the other, whatever you choose. And it acts similar in the sense that wherever you paint the mask, it keeps parts of your image still. So in order to use it, you'd pretty much just paint over all of this area that you don't want to move. And it'll accomplish the same thing as plotting all of our anchor points. Just like so. 
Now we have two different options in mask. We have the circular, the round brush tip, and we have the square. So I'll show you what that looks like. I don't know if you can see it, it's a little bit light. Um, that's because the feather is on. So we have our feather at 100%, which is essentially the opacity of the brush. So I'll put it right down to zero and I'll show you the difference. There we go. And I'll even show you with the circular brush tip. It's a little bit hard to see because it is a black background, but hopefully you get the idea. There. This little minus button here by the mask, that's if we just want to erase. So there I just clicked on the minus button and we can go ahead and re erase that. Perfect. I'll go ahead and press play again. You see the image live. Perfect, okay. Let's try one more image here. This one is really interesting because we are animating a liquid and you can do this with really any liquid or beverage. So again, we'll go ahead and start with our animation tools and our motion arrows. And we'll plot shorter motion arrows here. And by doing so, we can achieve a little bit more of a curved animation versus straight line. And this one takes just a little bit more precision, but it's still very quick and very simple. Now, one thing I can mention while I'm working on this is the um, the file formats that you can import are JPEG, bitmap, PNG, TIFF, or raw images. And what you can export to is WMV, MP4, and animated GIF. So in other words, almost any kind of file format you can import and the export file format will play nearly anywhere. So just about finished here, I'll just add a couple more. And when you're working on these yourself, you can go ahead and spend as much time as you'd like, but I think we'll still get a pretty impactful outcome here. Now I'm just using my anchor points to anchor the outside of the coffee cup here. So it's just the liquid that's going to animate. There we go. Now let's go ahead and press play and see what we get. Perfect. Again, I hope you can see the impact of this. I'll, you know what I'll try now is I'll stop and speed it up a little bit. There we go. So it looks really neat. It looks like you've just taken a spoon and stirred your cup of coffee. Perfect, okay, so I'll go ahead and stop it. A few more tools here. This next tool is the select tool. So what we can do is drag and select um, any of your anchor points or motion arrows here to delete at once. So here I've just clicked and dragged a square around and now it selects all of these points and we can go ahead and delete. Now, if you say, whoops, I didn't mean to do that, this button down here is undo. So I can go ahead and undo, and you can undo or redo up to 100 times, actually. So you don't have to be worried about making a mistake and losing all of your hard work. This next tool is the freehand select. So this just allows you to create a little bit more of an organic shape around your motion arrows and anchor points that you would like to delete. So there we go. Now I'll just undo. This next um, option here is Smart Photo Fix. So if you bring in an image, um, this one's not a great example because it is a professional image and um, it's already of very high quality, but if you bring in an image and it needs a little bit of work, maybe it's not, um, it's either too bright or not bright enough or you want to work on the saturation or sharpness, this is an all around one step photo fix. You can go ahead and click apply 
and it'll work its magic on your photo. You can see it, it did make a little bit of a difference here on this image, but um, it'll go ahead and work its magic on your image if you wanna make it a little bit more um, professional looking. This last option here is the crop. So just very similar to any other crop function you might have used before. Once you click it, you'll have the ability to crop your image to your desire. Just like so. Okay, so that covers pretty much all these tools. I think I'll just open one more completed animation and show you something a little bit more complex. So as I open this here, you can see there's a lot of more fine work done here. And what we're going to do, I'll press play so you can see it live, is we're just trying to make the fire rings look like they're animated. So I'll press play and you can see it. There we go. So what's great about Photo Mirage is it really captures the attention of the viewer because it's not a still image, but it doesn't quite look like a traditional video either. So it really transfixes people as it's something we don't really see every day. So it makes you stop and think and wonder about what you're really seeing. It is an absolutely great tool for boosting engagement on your social media platforms and for driving results on if you have a website or a blog. Um, with visuals that are truly uh, mesmerizing. Or if you just want to simply have fun with your artwork or photos, well, it's great for that too. Okay, so I'll go ahead and stop that. And I think we're ready to move on to our next plugin, which will be Pick to Painting. So I'll go ahead and close this now. and just get into PaintShop Pro 2019. Okay, so Pick to Painting, if you haven't um, familiarized yourself with it yet, it is a plugin uh, that easily creates artistic masterpieces with the help of artificial intelligence. Um, and how does it do that? It applies deep neural networks to analyze your photo and turn it into a work of art that replicates the style of iconic artists. So here, I've actually already launched Pick to Painting, uh, but I will show you the whole process in just a minute. So this is the workspace, whoops. This is the workspace here when you launch Pick to Painting. And it has its own icon. If you can see, it has its own icon that is different than the main software you'll be using it with. So this is the window here. And I've brought in this image and it's actually, it's quite simple and there's steps even that map out um, what you need to do next. So your first step here is to scroll through the different kinds of styles of paintings that you'd like to transform your own image in. So we can scroll through them here and I'll go ahead and try one and just show you how it works. So I click this one the thumbnail at the bottom and it'll show you in the step two uh, preview up here in the right hand corner. The next step would be click preview style and instantly it transforms your image into the same style as uh, the option you selected. The third step, which is a perfect example for this image, sometimes it goes a little bit overboard in terms of strength, and it always will show you your image at full strength. So this slider here, which is step number three, you can use to adjust the strength, and it happens right before your eyes. You can see it just diminish a little bit and get a little bit less strong until you find that sweet spot that you're happy with. So somewhere around here looks pretty good to me has a really interesting effect here. So we'll go through and try a few more. Be this gray stone etching looking style. So I hit preview style and it happens instantly that it transforms my image. Again, let's tone it down just a little bit until you find that perfect spot. There, that looks pretty interesting. Let's try one more here, this one. Preview style, instant. And we'll tone it down. 
So now when you say, yep, this is it, that's what I want to use, you can hit save and close. And it might take a second or two. It's really just the intelligent algorithms turning your photo into this masterpiece. So it, it is worth the wait. But hitting saving and close will bring it back into PaintShop Pro for you. So you can continue doing any kind of edits that you choose. Now, Picta Painting did come included with PaintShop Pro 2019, um, but if you have an earlier version of PaintShop Pro or, um, and you would like to purchase Picta Painting, you can do so um, in the Get More tab in the PaintShop Pro Welcome Book. So I'll also show you where that is. Maybe I'll just open. So here's PaintShop Pro 2018, and I'll go into the welcome book and show you where you can purchase purchase pick to painting if you'd like to. So just you can get into the welcome book by just hitting the little um, house icon up here in the top of the product, and then choose Get More, and it's right here for you. Pick to painting. So you just simply click on it and complete your purchase. Okay, there we go. So now you can see it's brought, in, it's brought our image with this very interesting style back into PaintShop Pro and we can, we can continue doing any kind of edits that we'd like to. Okay, perfect. Now what we're going to move on to our next plugin which is called Perfectly Clear 3 Complete. So I'll exit out here and I'll go ahead and bring in a new image. So we'll bring in this one here. So very similar as any plugin, you go ahead and bring in an image into PaintShop Pro in any way you'd like. So you can click, drag, click and drag an image in or as I did, go to File and Open. So once we're here, we go to Effects, Plugins, Authentic Imagery, or Imaging, excuse me, and then Perfectly Clear, Complete. If you're unfamiliar with Perfectly Clear, um, this is the, the version three and the complete version. So this is a photo editor and as I said, can be used as a plugin for PaintShop Pro and several other software applications as well. Um, it comes as an add-on if you've purchased PaintShop Pro 2019 Ultimate, but if you do have an earlier version or if you do not have the Ultimate version, you can also purchase uh, Perfectly Clear 3 Complete from the Welcome Book. So very similar. I'll show you just quickly here. Very similar to where you could purchase Pick to Painting. Uh, perfectly clear, three complete is here as well. Okay, so I've opened up Perfectly Clear, and this is what the user interface looks like. And I'll give you a quick run through and demonstration of how it works and what you can do with it. As you see right away, the user interface is very well organized and very appealing. So it really makes the user experience and launching process um, for the very first time extremely positive. Right off the bat, at the top left, you can choose between three different viewing styles. So the first is what you see here, which is just single image view. The second is a split screen. And the third, which tends to be my favorite is uh, kind of a before and after. So we have this slider here that will show you your original image versus what edits you're making to it, whether you're using a filter or a look or whatever you're using, you can see both sides. So this tends to be my favorite. So we'll leave it on here for the purpose of this demonstration. The next um, tool we have here is the zoom option. So you can use your cursor and this on the slider to do to zoom in and out to your image. And you can get really, really close there if you're working on real editing really fine details. 
You can also use your uh, scroller on your mouse as well to zoom in and out. A couple main highlights about Perfectly Clear 3 Complete. Um, it does use intelligent image analysis to find and fix camera flaws automatically to get you to your desired uh, outcome very quickly. It's also a very powerful batch processor, so you can safely correct all your photos at once with precision and accuracy, and it will save you hours and hours of manual work. Now, there's an amazing amount of image correction technology here, and it's all packed into different presets, um, which let you tune how you want your images to work, to look, excuse me. To apply these presets to your image, you, you simply just open this, it's great too, I'll just mention quickly, all of the tool panels have this little triangle which allows you to either open or collapse all of your tool panels. So with everything closed, as we see here, it keeps, it really does keep it really nice and organized. So we'll go ahead and open the panel here for presets and it shows you a whole bunch of different presets you can use. And you would simply just click on one and it'll show you the difference here. Now again, I hope you can see the difference. So this is the original image and we slide, we use the slider to move it over and we see what this preset does to our image each of which are designed uh, for a specific type of photography or correction set. And you can even manipulate these a little more and do some, create some custom presets based on your, your taste. Looks, now I'll close this quickly. Looks are very similar to presets as well in the sense that they intelligently apply a filter um, to alter the artistic, artistic appearance of your image. So I'll just click this one down here. So I particularly like it and we can see the difference. That is quite striking. I'll try just one more or so. And you can really do this with any kind of photography. I just selected this um, selfie because I wanted to get to some face aware technology that's built into this plugin, which is really great. So that moves us along to the right side panel here where you're, you'll find a lot more in-depth editing features um, if you don't want it to begin, per se, with a preset or a look, a lot more of your specific editing features are here on the right side panel. So I'll just remove that preset and we'll close the looks panel. And it starts here with our histogram, which can help you understand how the pixels in your image are distributed according to intensity. Shadow details are shown on the left, mid-tone details are shown in the middle, and highlights on the right. A histogram is, is quite useful. Um, it's a great way to judge the exposure of your image. Blue areas show cold pixels that lack detail in the shadows, and red areas show hot pixels which lack detail in the highlights. Now, as we go here, we can, let's just close all these to keep it organized. And as you go, depending on how you're working, you can just open each one of these panels as you need to get into the details. So these such as tone, color, detail. For example, tone, if you open that and are a little bit unsure of how to use it or what you can achieve with this panel, there's a handy question mark option here and you can go ahead and click that and it'll direct you to, um, here I'll just show you quickly, it'll direct you to a very short tutorial video on that particular tool that you clicked. So it's very nice and handy learning material built right in here. And each one of them have that little question mark for you to select if you want a little bit more guidance. Now this is the face selection that I just wanted to talk about really quickly. Um, 
this is a technology that um, it's it's very intelligent and it's great. So it, it automatically finds uh, or detects a face in our image here. And it tells us that by saying one found on the side. So here's this a selfie image. So right away, the intelligence built into the software can detect a face uh, automatically. And it shows us that here. There is also an app option to manually add face. So this is very useful in the event that we perhaps you have a big group shot and there might be one or two of the faces that um, the software just doesn't detect. So I'll show you an example of that actually. We'll cancel out of here and I'll bring in a new image. Here's a big group shot. And actually this one specifically in here will launch effects, plugins, authentic imaging, and perfectly clear V3. Now this particular image, um, all of our subjects are wearing sunglasses. So unfortunately, um, the software actually does not detect any faces, but that's okay. I'll show you how quickly it is to detect them. Now you'd simply just click that manual add face button and you click right where the eyes are on your subject and click apply and now it it can detect the face now. We just keep doing that for all of our people. Very quick and easy to add. And this will help us if we want to continue editing the face in more detail or the skin or anything like that. It'll help the intelligence know exactly where the eyes are, exactly where the faces are. So we can go ahead and continue editing. Now, if we're happy with the adjustments we've done, you can go ahead and click apply. And that will bring the image back into PaintShop Pro just like so. And you can continue making your edits in PaintShop Pro. Okay, so that about concludes the three plugins that I was um, going to show you. Now, Tanya, if you're ready, um, I think I can go ahead and pass it over to Tanya, who's going to demo Particle Shop for us. Okay, sorry, I had myself muted for a second. No um, problem. I, I might be able to just grab it here. Let's see. I'll change presenters if you're ready. All right. All right, I got it. Okay, so just let me know if you can see my screen here. Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, and just to let you know, Carly, I was trying to field a few of the questions <laughs> while you <laughs> were speaking, but everybody, um, I, I'm on the digital arts end of the spectrum, so I wasn't able to answer everything. I did my best, and Carly will follow up with you in regards of anything that I couldn't answer for you. Um, and what I'll try to do is I'll end, uh, we have some extra time here, so, I'll end a little bit early to answer questions that you might have about Particle Shop. So what I've already done is I've got Paint Shop Pro 2019 launched, and I already opened up my images. Um, so hopefully you all know how to do that, file open, and I just have everything tabbed up and ready to roll here. Um, so Particle Shop is just another wonderful plugin that we can use in Paint Shop Pro and numerous other editing applications. And you find it, like Carly was showing, from under the effects menu. So you can get to it from right here, or you can go to plugins and launch it from there as well. So before I actually launch a particle shop, I want, just want to take a look in the layer stack over here. Right now, I have just the original image on one layer. What I would like to do um, is to duplicate this. So if I just right click, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the original image so that I'm 
maintaining or preserving the original. And when we get into particle shop, I can do all my painting or add all of my wonderful strokes onto this copy of the image. And um, I'll explain a little bit once we get in there. So now we're ready to go to effects. We'll go to particle shop and it's gonna go ahead and fire it up here for us. And when it first opens, we're gonna see, well, it, this is giving you a little reminder here. So what I just showed you how to do, how to duplicate the background, we do recommend that you create a copy of the original image that you're working on um, because it makes it a lot easier if you maintained your original image, you can save just the strokes and then those will come in as a layer in PSP. And you'll see exactly how this works because I'm gonna show quite a few examples. Um, so we've already done that. I can check, don't show me this message again, or if you're forgetful, leave it on. It'll remind you every time. And now I'll go ahead and launch Particle Shop. We've got our welcome screen here. And with Particle Shop, <coughs> pardon me, we have a ton of additional brush packs. So I'll show you what you get when you first buy the plugin. But what we've done is to create additional brush, brush packs for certain workflows. So whether you want to add water or lighting effects or feathers or fabric or flowers, we have pretty much anything that your little heart desires. And you can preview all of these from right within Particle Shop. And you could see examples of the brush strokes. You can also purchase right from the welcome screen. We also have these on the website um, and they're under brushes on the website and I can show you that a little bit later. So what you're gonna get when you first buy Particle Shop is something called the core pack and then from the welcome screen, I encourage you to download the ex exclusive brush pack. This is free to you. You just click here and it will install. So I'll go ahead and close this out. Um, I did forget to mention, you can choose whether or not to have this show when you start the application. If you don't want it to show every time, just uncheck the box there. So we'll close this out and we're ready to do our first, I'm gonna start off simple. So I have this forest scene here and I'm just gonna move the go to meeting panel. Um, hang on a sec, I have to undock it from here. Well, it's not letting me undock. So hopefully this isn't gonna get in our way. Here we go. <laughs> okay, guys, I guess we'll just deal with it. Um, so on the left, what we have is, and I have quite a few brush packs installed here. They all come in in alphabetical order. So what you get when you install PaintShop Pro is called the core pack so right here if we go ahead and select our core pack it's going to show me down on the bottom the variety of brushes that are available in that pack um, and you have some really nice ones to start off with so i'll show you the core and the exclusive so to begin with let's go ahead and grab maybe this billowing brush and i love this brush for the kind of smoky flowy effect that it creates so once you've got a brush, if we come over all the way to the left here, I've got the brush tool selected. And before I begin to paint, what I might wanna take a look at is the color palette. And you can move this wherever you like. You can also click this pin. Um, it's a floater, but if you want to pin it down or dock it, just click the pin and then it'll remain in that location. I'm just gonna keep mine floating. So the color, as you select this, the outside is the hue and the inside is the saturation or value of that hue. So for smoky kind of effect, I'm gonna want, you know, maybe kind of a, a light gray. And the color that you have is showing right here. Almost all of the brushes, if not all of them, in Particle Shop also allow you to add a glow if you would like that. Um, so let's leave that on and we'll just come out and we'll do a test stroke here. So when I do this, you see it's a very subtle brush. Now, because if we look on the top, on the property bar here, all the way to the left, 
this is, um, I can reset the tool as if I make any changes to these properties here. So you can size the brush. Right now we're working with um, the default size and the default opacity. I'm also using a Wacom tablet. So I have a stylus, which allows me a little bit more control over how the strokes are falling over my image. If I just go ahead and use my mouse here, you s it works perfectly well with the mouse as well. You just don't have quite as much control. Now these brushes, the one that I have here is a particle brush, and they're very flowy, dynamic, it kind of spins and twirls and it creates these really cool effects. So you can adjust the size, you can also adjust the opacity if you wanted that to be a little bit lighter. And we can adjust the count or the number of particles that are on this brush. So if I bring this all the way down and we come down here, it's uh, so small that you can't even see it. I'll bring it up a little bit more. So it just gives less particles on that brush. So you can play around with these to your heart's desire, depending upon what kind of image that you have. Um, so now I've added a little bit of smoke in the background there. Let's go ahead and try our, I want to add a little bit of fire. So if I go to the heat trail, I'm going to go ahead and select that. And if we just experiment, um, this is a very dark photo, but there is a pile of wood down here. And this brush has a really beautiful glow to it, which emulates fire perfectly. So I want it to be very bright in the center. And then as I kind of move up, I can trail the fire off. Okay, so we've got a nice little fire brewing there in the woods. Now, just to show you before I move on any further, I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And we have the option of merging the brush strokes with the physical image, or we could save only the brush strokes. So let's save only the brush strokes. And we'll come out here and we can see, if I turn the background off, it's going to be very hard to see the steam there. Um, but we'll go ahead and turn that back on. And now I could actually even use the layer opacity if this gives me more flexibility than actually painting the strokes onto the photo itself, all right? So that is just a very first simple example. So let's go ahead and, actually I could even add a little bit more to this. So if I wanted to make it even more fantasy, I'm gonna go ahead and once again, duplicate. Okay, so now we'll work on this copy of the background and we just need to once again, launch Particle Shop. And maybe we'll add some fireflies in the background here. And I want to show you this other brush because um, there's some more property options for the brush that you have access to. So let's go ahead and launch. We already created our duplicate layer. And I'm going to say don't show this anymore at startup so you don't have to see that throughout the demo. And let's go to the exclusive pack. So here we go to the exclusive and there's a really nice brush called the light brush. And this is perfect for adding um, either starbursts, stars in the sky. In this case, it could be little fireflies that we have floating around. So let's select a nice bright color so that you can see this. And if we come up to the property bar here, we still have, you're always gonna have the size and the opacity on the brush. This particular brush also has grain. And this is pretty neat because there's a paper library that you can choose from. So let's choose a really expressive texture. Actually, this one will work quite well because you'll be able to see um, that pattern. And as I begin to paint my strokes out here, and I don't know why, let me just try to reset this and just we'll try a different pattern here. Let's try this guy. I think GoToWebinar is messing with me right now. So let's just go ahead and paint our little fireflies. So I'm gonna do a nice light, kind of a lemony sort of yellow. And with this brush, what you saw is if I click and hold, it's gonna keep adding more and more and more bursts to that star. It's also gonna make it really, really large, but depending upon how you use your stylus on the tablet, 
I'm going to come up here and let's say that's too much. Let's undo that. If I just do a tiny little click, we can get smaller. We can also size the brush appropriately. So if I want to bring this down and just add some tiny little, maybe even make it a little bit smaller, and we can add these kind of scattered around a little bit. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and say save, and this is going to be on a separate layer. So once again, if I wanted to adjust the opacity, I can do that. Okay, so that was just a basic introduction to some of the brushes that are included with Particle Shop. So let's go ahead and close out of this. And with this woman, what I'd like to do is her hair's a little bit boring. So let's add a little bit of flair with some colored strands. So let's go ahead and duplicate that layer or the image. And we'll come up to effects and we'll go to particle shop. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead, it's giving us that reminder again. Once we're in here, um, we're going to stay in the exclusive pack because there's a really nice hairbrush that's included. So I'll go ahead and grab this. And just to show you what these strands look like, let's go ahead and grab a color that will show up on the background. It's very realistic. So now I'm doing a slow stroke. This, once again, is a particle brush. Um, so we can control the length of the particles. With this one, it's pretty neat because you can also change the value variability. So what that means is within this one individual stroke, right now it's set very, very low. So it's pretty much maintaining the color that we have selected to begin with. If I start bumping this up, it'll add a little bit of value change within the strokes to give us, um, with hair that makes it look a little bit more realistic. So I just undid all of those strokes. Um, you can do that right up on the property bar or command or control undo. And I'm gonna come right up on the top here and let's just start adding in some Easter strokes of hair. And I can zoom in so that you can see a little bit better here. Oops, let's go a little bit higher, 150. All right. so. I see where I set the brush down. I have just kind of a little darker stroke right there. So some of the tools that help over on the left, I can use the blender tool to kind of blend things in and make it a little bit more subtle. We also have an eraser over there. So let's add maybe some, have to grab the brush tool if I want to paint. So let's add some pink strokes. This is in honor of Easter, which is coming up here. <laughs> pretty soon. So let's add maybe a little more darker blue. Okay, so we can have a lot of fun. Now, that stroke went a little bit off on its own, so I'm just going to undo. And sometimes that happens with the particle brushes because they're so dynamic. So it's very easy. And I have a very light stroke that I'm placing on the tablet here. So let's do some hair maybe coming off the side. And then we'll come and we can blend a little bit on the inside. You can also use the eraser, and that eraser is way too big. So I'm going to come up to the top and maybe just erase a little bit in the crease right here. Okay, so there's some subtle highlighted strands. When I go to save, we'll say OK. We come out here, and you can see with and without. And once again, you could use PSP to modify or enhance these using merge modes or anything that you might want to. So all of those brushes that I just showed are very useful. They're all included with Particle Shop, and there's a ton more. Um, but I'd also like to show a couple of my favorite packs that are extra packs that you purchase. And the reason that you may want to use these is if you would like to turn a photo into a painting. Um, and we can do this quickly and easily. So this is a very beautiful photo to begin with. I'm not saying this needs to be a painting, but it would look beautiful as an impressionist sort of painting. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the image once again and come up to effects and we'll go to particle shop. And this time I am going to use a pack that's called pointillism. And what I like about this pack is there's 
a couple brushes in there that lets you dip the brush into the photo and it uses the colors from the photo. So you don't have to choose your or mix up your own color. You can just paint with the colors from the photo. So let's go ahead down here and you'd go all the way to the bottom and we'll grab pointillism. And the brush that I would like to start with is called Besson here. All right, so let me just start by, I'll throw some strokes out on the page. So this brush is super tiny right now. So I'm gonna come up and let's make it, I, if you click the button right here, this resets the brush back to its original default, the way that we created it for you to use it. Um, once you start making adjustments, you can always reset the brush back to the default if you want to. All right, so this is pretty cool. Okay, so what this is doing, this is another particle brush, and I am swirling my stylus. So the particles are really doing this really cool swirling action. I'm gonna try turning on glow to see if that even enhances things even more. So I'm just gonna fill the sky with these, this beautiful pointillism effect, kind of break it up, break up those clouds. And it's very quick and easy. So I hope that this is coming across. I know Carly mentioned that sometimes in the webinar, things slow up a little bit for you on your end. But for me, this is just speeding along. I can twirl, whirl. Let's kind of take this and break it up a little bit. So this is super fun and easy. I don't even really have to think about too much. I'm just having, and if I really start to go wild, you see how those particles start to lengthen? Um, so I can kind of go back and forth to even give the points a little bit of a different effect. All right, so we added some really nice. Now, if I come over to the lights, I'm over here on the right. This brush is gonna be too big for the area that I'm working with. So I'm just gonna come and maybe shrink the brush a little bit and use a softer touch so that I can just very lightly turn these into points. Okay, so we've got the sky pretty much done. I'm gonna come down and grab another brush that will act as a blender brush. And this one, this one kind of adds, it's like little droplets almost, um, and it looks as if they're reflecting inside each one of the points. So this is perfect for me to convert something like this water into a more painterly type of effect. And I'm not gonna worry about um, his paddle right here. So if I go over the paddle, not to worry because I can always come back and use the eraser tool to erase any areas that I might've gone a little bit too far. So let's say I come up into the buildings up here and maybe I didn't want those to have this pointillism effect. I can quickly just come and grab the eraser. Oh, and let's make that bigger because it's too small. So you can see the size of the brush by the circle that's out on the, the image right there. And I'll just erase where I may have made any mistakes. Let me come down here. And this is where you know, the stylus comes in handy so I can easily flow around the page. And just in a matter of minutes, if, if even minutes, um, we've added some nice painterly effects to this. We'll go ahead and click save. And I'm gonna say save only brush strokes. And once again, when we come out, we'll take a look at the before and after. Okay, so there's with the strokes, there's without the strokes. And I see I kind of splashed over a little bit here. So we also have the eraser in PSP. And if I want to tidy that up a little bit, it actually doesn't bother me too much. It gives it a nice effect. So that is using the pointillism pack. Uh, maybe now I'll, I'll stop for a second and just check to make sure that how we're doing with the questions here. Hi, Tanya. Actually, yes, we do have a couple of questions specific to Particle Shop, if you don't mind answering them. Yeah. Um, the, the first one is just someone's wondering how many brushes come in the core pack. In the core pack, you have 11 brushes. 
Perfect, thank you. Um, I had a couple of questions too about how to customize brushes and if that's possible. Okay, so that's a great question. And I want to go back to that question about the core pack, how many brushes. When you download the exclusive pack along with the core pack, you have 21 brushes to work with um, by de default. So um, as far as customizing brushes goes, let me just hop back in. You can't actually customize and save any brushes. So when I was coming up and changing the size of the brush or the amount of particles on it or changing the paper texture, that's just on the fly. It doesn't actually allow you to save any of those brushes. So what we did was we tried to make it as easy as possible for everybody by creating brushes that are the way that you need them to begin with. But what I will say is if you're looking for a little more flexibility, you want to be able to customize and save some brushes, Painter is what allows you to do that. And all the technology in Particle Shop was taken from our Painter products. So um, that's why it gives you this nice painterly effect. Anything else that... Uh, there's one more about, or a couple of asking about using a stylus and tablet versus mouse with Particle Shop. So maybe just what would you recommend using? Okay. Um, it is not necessary to have, particularly with Particle Shop, we, we put a lot of thought into selecting brushes that will work with a mouse. But as always, if you're doing any kind of painting, a stylus is going to give you a lot more control and flexibility. So I always recommend, and, and I'm using a Wacom tablet, and right now because I'm traveling, I actually have the smallest Wacom Intuos tablet, and it works just great. Um, so they have tablets at a price point of $99 and up. So if that's affordable enough for you, I would recommend using the tablet instead of the mouse. So let me see if I can um, give you an example here of what the difference in the brushes are. So let's go to, I'm going to choose the other pack that I really like for kind of painterly, real painterly types of effects is the expressionism pack. Um, so I've got a green, this should show up well. and this is using the mouse, okay? That's what the brush looks like. So I can click and drag, it's one level of pressure. And because the particle brushes are so dynamic, it still will spin a little bit on its own. Now if I grab my tablet with the same brush, see how different that is? Um, I can get little tiny hairs based on the pressure that I place on the tablet, or we get this effect that we had with the mouse when you know, you're know you just clicking and dragging full force. It's a lot hairier. Now you can control some of that up on the top. If I wanna change the count of the particle, it's going to give me sparser hairs on the brush. We can keep reducing that in size. And you could use your mouse, but the flexibility that the tablet offers is amazing. Perfect, thank you. Now I do see a few other questions in here, but unfortunately we've run out of time. So what I can do for everyone whose questions haven't been answered is go ahead and answer those offline and uh, make sure that they're emailed to you. So you will get answers to your questions and I apologize if we, we didn't make it to yours yet. Um, but that does, that concludes our webinar on working with plugins and Paint Shop Pro for today. Um, we really hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you so much for joining and thank you so much, Tanya, for the beautiful presentation as well. Um, just a reminder as well for tomorrow to keep an eye out for that follow-up email uh, that you will receive and that will include a link to watch a recording of this webinar if you would like to review it. Uh, so again, thank you so much and hope to see you all next time. Thanks, everybody. And Carly, thanks for having me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.